Hello beautiful humans of the internet. Today I wanted to talk to you about artistic doubt and creative doubt and how it is a universal struggle for all artists but how we all seem to think that we are alone in this struggle. Um, so I opened up this conversation and this topic to my Instagram and my followers and I had some people write in and tell me their experiences with it. So I thought we would just have a little chit chat today and just hang out and talk about this topic that I think we all struggle with and affects every single creative person um but we all seem to think we're like in this little struggle by ourselves so grab a coffee grab a tea grab a beverageino and let's just dive in and have a little talk about this let's go So let's have a little talk about this because I feel like there's so many people who reach out to me and say that they're struggling with this and ask me if I'm struggling with it as well and the question is yes, obviously. Um, doubt is the necessary evil for creativity. We all experience it, it's just part of the artistic cycle and it's a universal experience for every single creative, every single artist. It doesn't just like magically disappear when you reach a certain echelon of success or once you get enough followers or you like make a certain income level or you just start making money off of your art um, as a baseline like it just doesn't disappear magically it's always going to be with you so it's really a matter of how do we navigate it and how do we work through it how do we overcome it and how do we not let it get in our way and prevent us from making the art that we're supposed to make and that the universe wants us to make so like I was saying, everybody struggles with it from small creatives, beginning creatives, to high, famous, successful artists. Um, for example, Leonardo da Vinci, who is probably one of the most famous artists of all time. He's just a household name, everybody knows who he is. Um, but he infamously struggled with starting projects and never finishing them or never seeing them through or just abandoning them or just not, never even starting. He was infamous for just writing stuff down and then never actually following through with it. Um, da Vinci was always struggling with doubt, never feeling like things were perfect enough and getting in his own way. And just if Leonardo da fucking Vinci can overcome his doubt and become the famous artist that he was, imagine like you can do it too. But also, on the flip side of that, if he hadn't let his creative doubt get in his way and prevent him from starting projects or finishing projects, just imagine how much more art he would have made. And the same thing is true for all artists. Just imagine if you were to let your little small fear-based voice stop running the show, imagine how much art you would make and how much you could offer the world and put out back into the universe. So I'm just going to read a little quote that I think is very pertinent to this topic and that I hope will be a good resource for some people watching this who are struggling with creative doubt. And it's an excerpt from my favorite speech made by Neil Gaiman during his commencement speech. You can find it on YouTube. I'll link it below in the description. It is such a beautiful motivational speech for artists and creatives based on imposter syndrome, creative doubt, and just being an artist and chasing your dreams and chasing the call of creating. Um, so I watch it once a year. I think it's a really important reminder of how to remove blocks and how to get out of your own way. Um, and I'm just gonna read my favorite part for you guys and hopefully you can kind of take what you want out of it and integrate it and just use it however you want to. Life is sometimes hard. Things go wrong. In life, and in love, and in business, and in friendship, and in health, and in all the other ways that life can go wrong. And when things get tough, this is what you should do. Make good art. I'm serious. Husband runs off with a politician? Make good art. Leg crushed and then eaten by a mutated boa constrictor? Make good art. IRS on your trial? Make good art. Cat exploded? Make good art. Somebody on the internet thinks what you do is stupid or evil or it's all been done before? Make good art. Probably things will work out somehow, and eventually time will take the sting away, but that doesn't matter. Do what only you do best. Make good art. And make it on the good days, too. And while you're at it, make your art. Do the stuff that only you can do. The urge, starting out, is to copy. And that's not a bad thing. Most of us only find our own voices after we've sounded like a lot of other people. But the one thing that you have that nobody else has is you. Your voice, your mind, 
your story, your vision. So write and draw and build and play and dance and live as only you can. The moment that you feel that, just possibly, you're walking down the street naked, exposing too much of your heart and your mind and what exists on the inside, showing too much of yourself, that's the moment you may be starting to get it right. I think just the important thing to take away from that is that the only person that can make the art that you're going to make is you. And sure, things have been done before, and if you're struggling with the age-old fear and block that, oh, it's not original or it's already been done, of course it's already been done. Of course. But no, it hasn't been done by you. You haven't done it yet. The world hasn't seen your take on that thing. So if that's your block and that's how your creative doubt is showing up as it's not original, that's fine. Sure, it's not original but you haven't done it, so do it. Show the world how you would do that. And to continue talking about, oh, it's not original or it's already been done before, I also wanna expand on that by offering you a quote from Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert, who also really dives deep into that very common block and doubt that people have. Um, so here's that quote. Anyhow, the older I get, the less impressed I become with originality. These days, I'm far more moved by authenticity. Attempts at originality can often feel forced and precious, but authenticity has quiet resonance that never fails to stir me. I just love that. We can oftentimes put ourselves inside these boxes thinking that, oh, I need to be original or I need to make the next new thing, but everything has already been done before and once you kind of come to terms with that and realize that, yeah, this has already been done before, but how can I do it a little bit differently? Or how can I do it? Because that's gonna make the difference there is how do you do it? So be authentic and create the art that is inside you that you just wanna see in the world and stop being blocked by, oh, it's already been done before. Because yeah, it has, so what? So is breathing, are you not gonna breathe? Just do the thing. Another thing that has helped me a lot as an artist is, and I don't even know where I heard this from, I think it was just some blip from some video I read, or I, some video I read, from some video I watched or some book I read when I was first starting out as an artist and a creative entrepreneur. Um, and that was in regards to comparison and how we sit here on social media, on our phones, constantly scrolling and scrolling and scrolling um, and just comparing ourselves to all these other artists online and the work that they're presenting to us. But when we sit there and we're comparing ourselves to the work that they're presenting to us, we're comparing our reject piles to their highlight reels. And I think that's something that we don't step back and recognize is that when you look at somebody's best work that they're putting on their Instagram or their website, internally you're comparing with that to your worst work or your most like mediocre work. And you're not sitting there and comparing highlight to highlight. And even if you were, that's okay because their journey is so different than yours. Everybody's journey is gonna look different. So comparison is never, you're never comparing on equal grounds because it's impossible. So I think the important thing is to remember that comparison is really the thief of joy. I know that quote is so overused, but it's so true. And it's so easy to fall into that trap of just like scroll, 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 compare, compare, compare. But if you can catch yourself in that doom scroll and in that compare scroll and you can just observe yourself doing it and just step back from it for a second and maybe just put the phone away when it happens, it's a really hard thing to do because we oftentimes don't even notice that we're doing it um, or we're just scrolling and we feel like shit and we're just like, ah, <laughs> I do it too. Um, but if you can just have a little bit of that self-awareness to recognize when you're scrolling that it's not making you feel inspired or it's not making you feel good and you can set that boundary with yourself. I think that's a really important healing tool as an artist and a really important artistic boundary to set is that, is this making me feel inspired? Is this making me feel good? Or am I just scrolling and not feeling good? We should be able to approach our social media accounts um, with a sense of wanting to feel better for participating and if the participation is making you feel worse, then I think it's time to readjust and realign and set some boundaries with yourself so that you can use social media in a way that's more positive and more inspirational than training. Another important kind of note that I wanted to add 
kind of from the comparison viewpoint, but also just in creative doubt in general, is know that everybody doubts. We all do it. Every single artist has artistic doubts and has moments of creative blocks and creative doubts about their work or their process. So know that everybody doubts and know that it's normal, but don't let it get in your way. If you can acknowledge it, observe it, see the lesson it's trying to teach you or even thank you for what it's trying to show you and then let it go so that it doesn't get in your way. I think that's a really important tool to utilize as well. Just see it, be like, oh, I see this doubt now. I see that maybe this is from a place of fear because I don't want to fail or maybe I'm feeling just not good enough in my art or maybe I haven't pushed myself creatively or I'm just not feeling inspired so that little seed of doubt comes in and you can kind of see the lesson it's trying to show you or she see how it's trying to keep you safe. A lot of time our doubt comes through because we're doing something new and exciting and scary um, and our fear comes in and fear is there to keep us safe. So maybe it's trying to keep you in a little comfort zone. Maybe that's okay for now, but maybe you don't want to be in that comfort zone. So acknowledge the doubt, acknowledge the fear and then choose to move past it so that you can break out of that comfort zone and just dissolve that fear. I've done a lot of talking <laughs> about my own kind of tidbits that I've learned that have helped me with creative doubt. So I kind of want to just take this time now to share some of the stories that people wrote into me um, and share some other insights into creative doubt and how other people experience it as well. So here we go. Creative doubt for me happens during a session. Shooting block like writer's block. I get overwhelmed and I can't get into a state of flow. I love this because I also experience this and the way I've used to hack my brain and to hack my mind is I just save photos from my own work, sometimes inspiration from other people's work. I just have it on my phone and my phone is always in my back pocket during a shoot. And this way when I'm shooting, I know I can refer to it to kind of just like jog my brain and just kind of like remind myself what's next in the flow or how to move through from there. Even just to do something completely different and something kind of fun that I've never tried to shoot before before. Um, I, I was talking to this person on Instagram through messages and she said back to me, oh, I never thought to do that because it didn't seem professional. And I think it's a tool and how like whatever tool you need to use to make your experience and your artistic session the best for you and your client, I think is totally appropriate and totally professional. It's just like a painter. A painter often has reference photos next to their canvas or they look up inspiration or if you're drawing a bird, you oftentimes have a photograph of a bird or a real bird to draw that reference from. So if you're stepping into a photo shoot, of course you can have references. Of course you can have that toolkit that you need to be successful in your creative process. The saying that everything has already been done. It's hard to know if my ideas are unique and it feels discouraging at times to create despite all of that. Okay, so we kind of already touched on this and that everything has already done, been done and yes it has, but do it anyways and do it your way. Make good art and make your art. Um, yeah, just screw it. Of course it's already been done before, but it hasn't been done by you, so get out there and do it. I have been filled with the doubt of making it as an artist and that being able to monetize my art was the key to being successful as an artist. I'm trying to undo having the feeling of I'm not an artist if I'm not making money. Did you or do you currently feel that way as an artist? Oh, this one is so good. Um, so it's basically like you don't feel like you're a real artist unless you're making money from your art or making a living from your art. And I think that's a very valid fear and a very valid block to have. Um, and to not feel successful because you're not monetizing your art is very common, but I think redefining what success is is the key to breaking through that block. Do you need to make money from your art to feel successful? What does success mean to you? Um, if it is making money from your art, that's totally okay and valid as well. And then you just gotta make a little strategic game plan to get there and trust in yourself and trust in the process. Um, and I'm gonna refer to Elizabeth Gilbert's Big Magic book again because she does reference this in the book as well. And she does talk about how making, uh, how forcing your art to make money from you is detrimental to your art and your creativity. And she actually encourages people to not quit their jobs and to not just go full into their art until they have a foundation. 
because you need a little bit of safety and wiggle room to be able to nurture your creative self and to feel secure in your creativity. If you're forcing your art to be your main source of income and you're not quite ready for it to be that, then you are forcing yourself to sit down every day and create art that's not fulfilling because you need to. I'm gonna read a quote from her from the book exactly because I think it's just really, um, it just really fits this question really well. But to yell at your creativity saying you must earn money for me is sort of like yelling at a cat who has no idea what you're talking about and all you're doing is scaring it away because you're making really loud noises and your face looks weird when you do it. <laughs> I just love that because it's totally true. Your creativity doesn't know what you're talking about. It just knows that it wants to exist and to bask in the sun and it needs a safe space to do that. So if you're just sitting there being like, well, I need, I need you to make money, you're almost scaring it away and you're kind of killing your creativity even more. So if you need to work a day job in order to have the funds, in order to make your art, that's totally valid and you're still an artist. You're an artist no matter what you do. If you just self-identify as an artist, you're an artist. I have um, an argument that everybody's an artist because life is art. I know it's really cheesy, but everything we do is art. Cooking is art, dancing is art, singing is art. Having conversations that you're passionate about is art. Loving people is art. I think Van Gogh says that. Um, remember the exact quote but he's like the most artistic thing is to love people or something like that and I think it's totally true so we're all artists and you don't need to make money in order to be an artist you're just an artist so make your art however you need to and make it however feels the best for you I'm consistently worried that if my art resembles someone else that I've fabricated to myself that I believe in my art and that I'm merely a copycat I'm also often worried that the message my art sends or tries to send isn't important enough to be shared or that I'm not important enough Whew. Okay, so there's two big points in there. Um, the first one is that you don't feel like you're an artist if you're a copycat, or you feel like you're just a copycat. And then you're also worried that your art isn't important enough. So the second one is really more imposter syndrome, which I think really does go hand in hand with creative doubt. The two are really just different sides of the same coin. Um, and in, term, and in regards to the copycat problem is we all copy, we all draw inspiration from art, other artists. Sometimes the copying can be plagiarizing and that's when it's not okay, but if you're just drawing inspiration from somebody and integrating it into your art and then making it your own, that's all art is. That's what art is, it's an interpretation of what we see and experience and so it's okay. You're not a copycat, you're just an artist. And in terms of imposter syndrome, I think that is a, another video that I really want to dive deep into because it's something that I struggle with all the time and I feel like a lot of people struggle with. Um, I would even argue that it's the same thing as creative doubt where it's universal experience and that nobody is free from it. But know that your message is important enough. The story you want to tell is important enough. There's only one person who has your journey and your story and it's you. So you might as well share it because nobody else can. And the one thing that makes your art unique and important is that you made it. Nobody else can do that. You're the only person who can make your art and share your story. So get out there and do it. <laughs> Another question I had that I didn't actually write down, um, but that I remember very vividly because a friend of mine actually wrote it into the Instagram story was that their creative doubt gets so bad sometimes that they just won't even start a project or they just won't even, they won't finish it. So they'll either start it and give up or they just like won't even start because they're so doubtful of how it's gonna turn out or they're so doubtful of their ability to do it. And I think that's something that's very real and very relatable and very valid. And like I was saying at the beginning uh, with Da Vinci, like he did that all of the time. So it's not just smaller artists that struggle with this, it's huge famous artists who have decades of experience in their field is that the idea of doing something not perfect or not the way you envision it in your head is so daunting that we don't even take it on. But I think there's a certain importance of releasing expectation of how the outcome is gonna be and just knowing that art is a journey. It's really not the destination. It's how you present the idea and how you move through it and kind of move with whatever comes up during the process. So maybe it doesn't come out exactly as you wanted it to, but maybe it comes out a bit better because it's different and it's it came out how it was meant to. Um, 
there's definitely a certain degree of release and letting go that is really integral in overcoming creative doubt. And it's really hard. It's really hard to surrender to the process. And it's something that I've struggled with a lot <laughs> is just being like, hey, just let it go. It's gonna be exactly what it needs to be. And just releasing the expectation of perfection because perfection is a myth and it's not real. <laughs> so yeah, I think that is all I have for you guys today. Um, I'm realizing now that I didn't even drink my beverage you know, that I made <laughs> for this video to have and to talk with you guys. I just got too passionate about talking about this subject. Um, if you have any questions or you have any comments or you want to just say how you relate to creative doubt below, I would really love to hear your experiences. And thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, hit that bell, and all that fun stuff. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye! Oh my god, my mouth is so dry. I talk so much. Oh, so many words. <laughs>